What do you do when you're one of the little guys, but you're upwardly mobile and you're ready to move into a new, bigger house? And you look around, but there aren't any. And then you discover that a bunch of nearly naked, thoughtless, bipedal hominids have stolen your house. What are you going to do? Well, that's the problem that we're going to try to help solve. What's happening is that tourists are picking the seashells off the beaches and hermit crabs need those shells to live in. And because the shells are gone, the hermit crabs are going extinct. Sometimes people do things with the best of intentions and they wind up causing more problems than they had in the beginning. So the biological and ecological considerations of this project are completely beyond my expertise and beyond the scope of this video. I know that they're working with bioresins and dealing with all of the ecological ramifications so that we don't just wind up putting a lot more plastic on the beaches, which is the last thing we need. They came to me and said, how can we cast a lot of these shells and that's a problem that this video is going to try to solve. Alexander sent 3D models of the shells he needs to cast. I brought them into Blender and added the funnels, sprue, and vent systems. Then I arranged them on the build plate for printing. I could have done that just as well here in Chitubox. Either way works fine. I printed them with our Elegoo Mars 2. I like this printer. It's been a reliable workhorse for the channel. And for the first time, we're using a resin from our new friends at Soraya Tech called Simple. I like it a lot. It's lower odor than other resins I've tried, and it printed really beautiful parts. Plus, I like that you can clean it up with warm soapy water. I got them laid out the way I want them to sit in the box, and with the parts set up, I can figure out the dimensions of the mold case. I also want to use these mold parts as a mold cradle when I do the actual resin pouring. So I'm going to make rounded ends on the sides perpendicular to the pull of rubber bands. And here's the case in Blender, looking good. I put those little feet on the long sides just to stick them to the build plate better and also support the walls as they got taller. The walls don't actually have much surface to attach them to the build plate with. And those little feet actually worked out really well. It's time to get the print started. Here I am using the Aquila X2 printer. Thanks to Voxalab for providing it. This print took over eight hours to print and it came out just fine. And uh, I discovered that uh, PLA doesn't sand very well, but it does scrape really well, which means it would machine. So you can smooth out surfaces pretty nicely just using a steel scraper or a razor blade in this case. All right, let's glue this together. Sticky wax to the rescue. Again, the huge advantage of wax is that it sticks stuff together nicely, but then it comes apart easy. Okay, I got the case welded together with wax, and that worked out great. It's pretty tight, pretty cool. So now we pop the shells in, and we're ready to pour rubber. These pieces were a little trickier to cut than I expected, so to make it easier, I sliced the mold right down the middle, effectively dividing it in half. I was careful to leave it in one piece, though, and not cut it into two separate parts, and that's because it's a one-piece cut mold. And the only way to get the mold to realign properly is if it's all in one piece. Now you see the point to how I constructed these end pieces. I want to make nice round ends so that the rubber brands put a nice even amount of pressure straight across the mold. We just kind of coax it all nicely into alignment. And you don't need a lot of rubber bands, and you don't need heavy-duty rubber bands. I'm going to say three of these rubber bands is going to be more than enough. But that's all there is to it. That is ready to pour. All right, let's go. Let's go, go, go. Once again, we are dealing with heat here in the Southland. Lots of it. It is sweaty hot, steaming hot. Let's see how we do. I'm going to dump these pretty quick. Hey, they've all come up the spruce. It's all looking good. Let's run these into the tank. All right, let's Yankee from the tanky. Let's open the pot and see what we got.
La -da -dee -da 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 -da. Let's see if we won or lost. I let these pieces sit in the mold for quite a long time because the walls are so thin that if I don't, they'll really deform when you pull them out of the mold. They're thin walled parts and they want to grab a hold of the mold pretty good because of their shape. But they come out okay. Yeah, these being, being kind of hollow shells are a little bit harder to extract than a solid piece would be. Solid piece would pop right out. But these shapes tend to grip on both sides, grip, grip both sides of the mold, so. But still and all, these are nice and clean. A Little bit of a parting line, but the good news is the crabs are not gonna give a rat's, you know what? about the parting lines. They're simply not gonna care about the parting lines. And they're gonna glue together. Like that, they're gonna glue together. Now, if I had one critique, I have a couple critiques actually about these, the design of these. See how thin? It is down and deep in those spirals, how, how thin the resin is in there. I think that's too weak. I think you, they should not be that thin. I think they're uh, very prone to tearing or breaking when you take them out of the mold. But the other critique that I have is these are extremely hard to assemble. And what I would do if I had to assemble a ton of these is I would make little thick spots on the shells and I would have a pin on one side and a hole on the other. I see these little holes. I don't know what those are for because they don't have corresponding pins on the other side. And that's a real problem. So these should just pop together for assembly because, I mean, theoretically, they're supposed to assemble tons of these things. And so I think these are going to be very difficult to assemble. So before I would go into production on these, I'd make some slight modifications to the design. Otherwise, um, I think these are pretty cool, and I think they would work out just fine. Now some of you may be tempted to point out he 3D printed these shells, why don't you just 3D print the shells and uh, not bother with the casting? And my answer to you is if you had 10 of these molds or 20 of these molds, which would take a couple days to make, no doubt, 10 molds, eight cavities of each cycled at uh, two times an hour, that's 160 parts an hour. Uh, you would have to have a lot of 3D printers working full time to print 160 of these an hour. It's not just printer time. Once they're printed, you have to get them off the build plate. You got to clean off all the supports. You got to clean the resin. You got to post cure the resin. In production, at least in the current state of technology, casting just kicks printing's butt for speed. I don't even know if you can get bio resins for 3D printing, but I think in this particular job, you're going to make a lot more parts a lot faster using molding than you will using 3D printing. And I'm speaking to someone who just absolutely loves both, so I'm not prejudiced. If printing was faster, I would say, well, I'm not wasting my time with rubber molds. I'll just print them it's so much faster, but that's not the case. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you like this video, and I will see you next time around.